thank you everybody for coming um thank you i first want to thank uh kilolo and alma lewis for their generous opportunity for me to be here to experiment to grow um like kilolo said uh we've worked on a project together in 2021 but the actual uh build up to the project took almost a year to build as changing ideas you know trying to learn from uh, each other and uh, learned so much from Kilolo that uh, it would take me years to like actually unpack. Um, so I'm I'm really grateful to be here and it's it's also very exciting. Uh, it's also very exciting to be here as well. Um, and I thank uh, the the team members of Alma Lewis. They've been such great hosts, uh, making Pittsburgh lovely from New York. <laughs> Uh, and, and and everyone also for coming out tonight. Um, so to go to uh, this presentation, um, I'm going to give a fair idea of past projects that I've done over the over the past years. Uh, I was born in in Ghana, as Kilolo mentioned, uh, and then in in Ghana in, during my undergrad degree, I I, tra I was trained as a painter and sculptor, but. Uh, things change, and then uh, that's why I'm here now. So I'll I'll run us through a few things and a few projects that I did over the past few years, um, as we go. Um, so in 2013, I, uh, I I had this class. It was an experimental class, but the whole premise was trying to learn photography, building your own pinhole camera, um, and then while shooting cityscapes and things like that, I thought I'd rather, you know, go to the beach um, because, it, you know, the sea is unstable, you know, light and color is like very uh, limited, but then that was the best pr uh, thing for me to like learn how to capture light movement uh, and texture. Um, but after that project, um, and that's why this image is here. After that project, when I came back to Kumasi, which is like the almost like the middle part of Ghana, I realized that some of the coins had changed. Um, and that was the beginning of my whole journey now. Um, I started uh, experimenting with how I could use the objects as my palette to paint and not use color in my studio. So... Uh, since 2014, I've not used paint in my studio, except till now, and you know why uh, <laughs> I did that. But building color and texture from the object and using it as a material to paint with or build sculptures with um, was the most interesting thing to me. Um, I also became fascinated by, by Ghana, the land of Ghana, because it's full, well, it used to be called Gold Coast for a reason and for the real reason that it was full of gold and other natural resources. Um, and our railway systems were built around where these resources were. So um, I became interested while I was making these sculptures, uh, revisiting these almost like colonial maps and building these installations that reflected where uh, these resourceful resources were at. Um, and while using that, I made, I, I moved, I picked uh, something equivalent to the US penny called the Ghana Pessoa. And the Ghana Pessoa, which was introduced in 2007, has lost so much uh, value that it was so worthless. Um, so nobody would even use the the Pessoa, the one Pessoa. But I thought that was a very powerful object to use because it had no value, even though it had the represent only the representation of what value is. And to talk about the Ghanaian economy in a way that the Ghana uh, our currency was made by the Royal Canadian Mint, which also was um, the lingering, you know, uh, or like the institutionalized of, you know, imperialism or neocolonialism and how several other, almost like all other African countries where, you know, our, their currencies were made by the Western institutions. Um, so I started investigating and almost critiquing what economic independence meant, you know, as a Ghanaian and what, you know, financial dependency also meant. And making these installations that were reflecting the landscape, reflecting, you know, the almost like the the map or topography of Ghana. Um, also, like I said, I was very 
early days in my career, so I was also interested interested in form. Uh, and as a sculptor and a painter, I, I I almost got tired of having works flat out onto the wall. So I started experimenting with things that got off the wall that were almost interrogating the structural, architectural structures of uh, the buildings that the works were going to be exhibited in. Um, so I made this installation, which was the first time I was using steel, but it was pennies on steel. And also, I love this because it was also the moments where we had to navigate or negotiate the structure of the building. So, you no, know, because it's incredibly heavy. <laughs> so now you are thinking of not just, you know, the object that has been made, but where it's going to leave also became a, a, a huge factor about it. Now we were thinking, of, I was thinking about how the work being the centerpiece in exhibitions and all of that was also going to have conversations with the other artists and other, other works in the, in the shows. Um, and also for the first time, the work became objects where you can look through. So, you know, an aspect of art that isn't normally exposed where, you know, paintings or sculptures are turned in almost inside out. So for the first time you had the work leaving almost inside out as well as, you know, having the facade uh, act as the canvas itself. Um, and in 2017, I, uh, in 2017, we, uh, a friend of mine uh, had a proposal for this show, and it was in a, a collapsed train station. Well, the railway system doesn't really work a lot, and not all of it, but there are some parts that work, but most of it are collapsed. So we had this collapsed uh, you know, locomotive shed, and we were you know, to exhibit. And as you can see, the works, my works are quite reflective and adorable, you know, almost like last year's. But, you know, in this space, it's an open space where people are using it for so many other things. So I could only make a work that I wouldn't expect to have again because it could pretend it was so exposed to like the natural elements. It was, you know, there was no humidity or temperature controls or anything like that because it was an open space. Um, so while I was visiting the space, I became interested in how um, uh, columns work, you know, to support structures. And I was almost connecting those aspects of architecture to uh, the systems of government or, or governance and how in at the time in the Ghanaian political system, certain, certain structures were not functioning, um, especially in this sector. So I made these... Um, these almost like pseudo columns that were, you know, floating or like hanging over and over walls and almost behaving as if they were columns, uh, they were covering it. So almost like the representation of uh, support, which is not actually functional. Um, so that aspect of, of the work also opened that fluidity of form where the objects, which is as solid, um, as metal now becomes something that you could almost bend uh, and something that you can almost attach or detach. Um, so also, also exploring those aspects and elements in my work. And uh, in, in, a, in 2017, again, um, there used to be this art festival, which potentially could have been the biggest art festival, perhaps like in the world or at least in Africa, called the Chalewache Festival. And it happened at, at a place called Jamestown in Accra, the capital. And Jamestown happens to be where, you know, there were, there were two forts uh, uh, fr from the Portuguese and, and the English in James Fort, the Asher Fort and the James Fort. And I got the size of the Asher Fort. Now, the Asher Fort used to be um, a female slave prison. Um, and then it had this huge wall, you know, we are on the streets and you have to make something. Um, and I was thinking of making a work that could easily arrest the attention of people because it's a festival, you know, it's almost like a carnival. So people are they're just like three seconds and pass. Um, but then I was using materials that I, it was meaningful to me. I wanted people to actually engage with the work as much as possible. Um, so, and it was also the the 60th anniversary of our independence as a country. 
So I made the flag, which is probably about the size of this wall and even bigger. Uh, and in, once again, incredibly heavy. <laughs> um, but the, at a time, I thought I'd made something really beautiful and cool. And then we put this up and within hours, maybe an hour or two, people started taking off the money. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, you know, you were so, I was so pissed, but it's so, much, so many people. And also it was drizzling, so it's raining on it. But I had had that experience of the work living in a space where, you know, I'm almost detached from it as an artist and having the work not. But honestly, at the time, I didn't, I wasn't thinking like that. I was thinking, you know, my work is getting ruined. Um, but it took me about a year to realize that the actual work that, that happened wasn't the object that I had made, um, but it was actually the interaction between the space, between the audiences, and, and the life span of how the work could change from what I've made in my studio. But it, it, at the exact time, it wasn't like that. I was pissed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, these were the cases. Like people were coming with bows, and also, uh, unfortunately, that part of the city is one of the most impoverished uh, parts of the city. Um, so imagine hanging a fabric of money that you know. I think the political, you know, con almost like contradiction of that was very, re very relevant. Once again, I didn't know about that until processing this years later um but people would take a lot of it so now it looks nothing like this and also also interestingly now is in one of the most luxurious hotels in the country uh and the context of something that lived in my studio you know glorious untouched and then being beat up and almost like picked up in the other 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 sites and also living you know they have like guards there like you know rules there to protect the work so those three almost like different contests i think it's really meaningful to the work um for me and then i uh i came to new york to to do um uh, my mfa and uh, the whole idea was me tracing how commodities have moved uh, and also included even human bodies as commodities to be traded, you know, thinking about slave trade and slavery uh, and how it became a very almost like lucrative aspect of economies around the world and especially in the U.S. So when I came, I mean, obviously, I uh, was fascinated by certain things, you know, the repetition of these uh, sewer covers, you know, steel, the textures and things now where... Uh, things that people would actually encounter every day, but almost walk over it or drive over it. Um, I became interested in um, documenting this with my phone uh, because the phone looks down, the camera of the phone looks down, but we are almost like stacked what is facing us. So I'll take pictures with what the phone was capturing whilst I was around the city. And I became interested in steel um, because you would see something I mean, I'd read and researched how the U.S. had a strong steel industry and how all of these things were now made in India. Uh, you know, that fascinated me. Um, and so I started experimenting with steel, uh, attaching and almost like removing uh, certain things from it. And you will leave like these traces of, or debris of marks of um, specific buildings, political buildings, which were coming from the penny. Um, and I, I later actually made, made my own uh, seawall cover, but this was all bronze uh, when I took a, um, a metals class. But um, that idea of making something that belongs to the government, that belongs to the state, almost who has ownership over these things, who has access to these spaces, who has access to these objects. Um, so I still have this, but then that idea that I could actually take something and let it live, you know, that ownership and that transformation of almost objects. Uh, initially, I would, I would print out the, the images and cut them out. And then I had like this uh, vinyl, but, you know, the stickers and I'll place them. Like imagine climbing maybe a sixth floor and seeing a, a sewer cover, you know, there, you know, that illusion. But I was playing with these forms 
you know, nothing political, but then the idea of form and transformation and movement as well. Um, and where my studio is, is it's in Williamsburg, but it's quite close to like these industrial fabrication workshops and, and offices and stores. And so I started collecting their debris as well, you know, the cutout steel, uh, because, you know, during my research in uh, the penny, I realized at some point it was, you know, steel, other metals had been used for it and already had, you know, developed some kind of interest in what steel, the tendencies and all of that. So I started collecting the waste uh, or the cutouts <laughs> and then in my studio, I used the same treatments or, you know, similar approach to what I'll do to the pestle and penny and, and change the steel. So these were all steel and penny that looked like gold and red. Um, but I love that. I love that the material could live in a world in a different way and also come to my studio and then go through other, you know, processes and pick up other objects. And then, you know, when you turn them into artworks, then it becomes also another form of uh, object. Um, so then I went to Philly. <laughs> um, I wanted to visit the the the, the mains because in Ghana our money is not made by us, so you don't have access to seeing how it's made. But I wanted to see how currency was actually made, how the coins were minted. And in Philly, uh, the lady at the at the front desk gave me a coin which I I don't have an image of. I'm sure it's somewhere, but it was a pack of two coins. One just a circle cut out the uh, metal. And the other is stamped a uh, penny. I was like, wow, cool. Then, you know, what is actually this? You know, that actually, actually, that started my whole curiosity of the materiality of the penny. Um, and in New York, they had uh, increased the, the, the minimum wage, uh, I think, to $14 or something. But my interest was, you know, who was getting paid that? Getting, getting paid this low, you know, because, you know, do you, I mean, you could imagine the lifestyle and, you know, expenses in New York and how little people could be paid. So I made this postcard and I would go to Central Park where people were relaxed, you know, taking leisure and, you know, enjoying themselves and ask them what they can, they can do uh, for a penny. Um, and then when they responded, I would actually pay them back with a, a postcard with a penny. So it was a almost a legitimate transaction, but we were almost trying, uh, you know, com like having this exchange over over a conversation or nothing, nothing tangible. Um, and then I did in uh, Times Square, also like a train stations, uh, uh, Grand Central, at any place where there were conventions or like transex, uh, transactions of time where people were chasing after things or you know, leaving things behind or actually just in the moment. Uh, and then we were talking about the penny, nothing else. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting these responses, I kept them. I built an uh, online archive on Instagram. So it has a dedicated page where all these responses live. Also, I was thinking about how um, I could expand the work, you know, the display or, you know, of the work or engagement of the work beyond uh, the gallery spaces or museum or art institutions. It's like the ordinary spaces where people, actual people live. Um, so Instagram became another archive for it. Um, but <laughs> during that, that uh, this project, I presented it to my, my, my uh, colleagues in class and the whole the whole team were like including the professor yo who did you uh who were you with while i was doing this project um because i had a backpack and i would dip my hands and if, i mean i'm ghanaian so bear with me <laughs> it's safe in ghana it's really safe but i'll dip my hands you know into the backpack and pull these post postcards i had never thought about the danger of you know a stranger approaching another stranger, dipping his hand in the backpack and pulling something towards him. Um, and everybody was f freaked out. And they were like, yeah, do you know you could have gotten yourself in trouble? And then it started making sense how, uh, how why I was getting so many little responses. <laughs> 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 because people would want to answer, but, you know, they 
I think it's they get started by, by the action. Um, and then I started, you know, realizing how, you know, the body or myself, you know, how I'm placed in, in, in America or at least in New York on the streets. Um, and quite thankfully or coincidentally, not thankfully, but um, that was the time when uh, this was in 2019. That was the time when, uh, you know, the border wall, you know, uh, immigrants, you know, getting out of America and all of these things were very apparent. So it made so many sense. It so much sense. Um, and I made this installation. Actually, uh, one night in the studio, I had I always turn my my phone off. Now I I don't anymore. But I I I closed from the studio around maybe one a.m. or so, and I seen so many missed calls and uh, test messages, and. Everybody was asking if I was safe and blah, blah, blah. And because the IC was driving or arresting illegal immigrants. Um, but then I realized how it feels to be an outsider or, an, you know, another. So I made these works or installations that were reflecting how and the, the foil, the silver thing, there is the emergency blanket. But how I could see on the news and other outlets how people were being treated because they were immigrants or illegal immigrants uh, at the borders and all of that um, I was thinking about exclusion so almost like closure of you know you see storefronts or things like that so picking up body uh, you know uh, elements of like closure and you know things that were almost excluding people um, and making the I made these installations and then COVID happened <laughs> Um, right towards the end of my my MFA, um, so I moved to well, I left I left uh, New York to uh, Ohio where my brother lives, and funny enough, we were like three people on the plane from JFK to Ohio because everything was almost shut down. Um, so there, taking advantage of how people were in the house, the parks were free. I have my steel, I don't have anything to do. Um, so I was like, I wasn't getting any supplies. So I was like, well, maybe the steel could live alone. Uh, they can exist alone without me, you know, intervening in, in the treatments or changing or anything. So I had these steel discs, which I had taken to Ohio and I placed them uh, in a park and I, I was taking photos with my my drone but then i later realized how it, it felt like i had dug holes into the earth and it was almost seen through the earth because it was reflecting the sky um once again almost like the uh the seawall covers imagine um looking down into the, the 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 earth and seeing the sky reflected and it it looks like nothing until like there was a body to interact with it then you see it was an object in itself um, so that, these were some installations that I was doing. I did some in New York as well at the beach, and also it was it was fun to see how the sea and the sand and the sun and the sky was reacting to just plain steel that I didn't do anything with them. And then it was 2020 again. Um, whilst in Ohio, I think I spent about two uh, two months there. I'm like, there were protests in New York. I'm an artist, like. The world is going to end. I would rather it ends in New York. <laughs> um, but I wanted to be a part of this historic moment. I wanted to be, I, I didn't want to, like my work, I try as much as possible to get first hand experience or first, uh, first hand as, uh, kind of encounter with it. So I can actually make things that are, that are meaningful and, and true to my work. So I came to New York and joined in the protest, the Black Lives Matter things. Uh, and, and in the studio, I was like, well, reading about, I, I mean, I remembered David Hammond's work and then uh, remembering that Marcus Gavi actually made African, uh, Pan-Africanist uh, flag. And, you know, a hundred years ago, he was fighting for the freedom and the representation of African-Americans or black people. Actually, for him, he was thinking about black people in general. Uh, and then in 1980, David Ammons had made the flag. So a hundred years ago, we were fighting the same thing that in 2020 we were fighting. 
and my work using the penny which has Abraham Lincoln's on as emancipation and what does it mean to be free? Uh, what does it mean to be liberated? Um, so I made the flag using coins uh, which were dated from 1920 to 2020. So even though the work was made in 2020, it was actually a hundred year old piece because it had the coins from uh, 1920. And then I made uh, this flag as well. And then I had a, a commission in that same year, a year later at, at Facebook, a year later, but uh, in, their, in their office in New York, um, well, their headquarters in New York, and the premise was to actually cover the walls with, with pennies, um, but well, make a work of art uh, on the walls. But I thought, I mean, we are on the 67th or 69th floor, uh, this is the main entrance of where so many people are giving their data, their, you know, their, their you know, information to. What does it mean to be free whilst you've given up so many things like that um, to a system that almost controls your, your data? Um, so I made this and, I mean, quite coincidentally, again, I, I got the floor richer than the vases. So it's almost like... To encounter the work, it's almost like you can walk through the work, uh, and whenever you are coming out, you are coming out of the work, and you know you are coming out of this almost like a value system, uh, almost like a record of. And these pennies, for the first time, I didn't treat some of them, so it still has the age of transactions of movement, and imagine how far you know a penny that was made in Philly has reached in the U.S., and you know who has touched it, and all of that. Um, so I made this installation also there. Um, and then this was before the Facebook project, but I placed it here because it will lead to another project. Um, so in 2021 again, or 2020 again, um, I needed, I needed uh, panels to work with. And I, I wasn't, the company that I would usually um, buy from the they had shut down so I wasn't getting it so I was scraping off um, a work that I'd already made that I didn't finish to make up another work and uh, whilst I was doing that um, I it was it was really hard because I use steel epoxy and that hardens so hard that uh, you know your knuckles. You know you ha I had a chisel and it was almost scraping. It was, it was also a very painful activity. But so while I was doing that, I I immediately almost remembered uh, Tulsa, the Black Wall Street, and how it was almost wiped out. Um, and I was thinking it felt to me like almost undoing economies, and it, it felt as if you know this must feel like how. Uh, Tulsa was almost like wiped out. The economy was distracted and, and almost demolished within hours. Um, so I did, I, I sent out, I was looking for maps and things like that. So I sent out emails to the Library of Congress and they were generous enough. They gave me the fire service, almost like uh, archive of these maps and I layered them onto these things almost distorted them and introduced newer forms of the steel, the shimmering sites, almost like the invasion of these new uh, uh, neighborhoods that had taken over um, the city. And I built this um, 20 foot by 80 foot piece based off the Black Wall Street um, in 2021. And then uh, this was around the same time that me and Kilolo uh, would start to think about a project, my gallery, we had we had uh, they had proposed that I have a show, um, but I thought this will be the most incredible anchor of the show because then we were tracing what I've been talking about. We'd be tracing uh, uh, the commodities from Ghana to the U.S. and almost going back to the U.K. Uh, because I was using Ghanaian coins, the U.S. pennies, uh, and then ending in where at least as a, a Ghanaian and, uh, you know, our heritage as, you know, their imperialism and, you know, involvement in the control of the African economy. So we did the show that was titled uh, Reflections from the Invisible Past, but almost, you know, 
reflects it on african-american or black contributing to global economy uh, through our objects through our efforts and labor and through our involvement um so we did did uh, we had this show and also our voices as well uh almost you know through writing and ad- advocacy and even activism and and that was the anchor of the show um then then yeah oh man i love these as well and then i came back and i had a, a solo show uh, at the institute of contemporary arts in san diego and also a residency but the residency was for a month in san diego uh but i mean the the borders in in ghana which i'm used to and even traveling elsewhere it's like completely different and vast because culturally politically and even economically but in san diego it's almost seamless it's two different countries but then the borderline it makes it feel like it's the same it's a very complex dynamic there because you have so many mexicans or uh people from the south america over the border and people actually live in san diego and work in in california like work in san diego um, they, they live in tijuana mexico sorry and then work in san diego so they will commute in and out um but i love the idea of this almost transaction between places and also that's exactly where the wall was built <laughs> so um i did the same what would you do for a penny but uh but this time i was i I was asking the question what you would do with a penny um and also given that the penny is worthless just a line across the same land uh what does it mean for value to be transferred in that sense so uh i was doing this with the people in the line crossing to the u.s uh and I was asking them, them these questions and giving them back a penny. And once again, you know, to take the penny across the, the border is like useless completely. But then to give them that, what was the transaction about? It was a question that I was really interested in. Um, and also uh, studying the wall. This is, this is the part of the old wall and how people were using it for so many other things. Well, the people on the other side we're using it as canvases for, and while this runs almost 50 feet, uh, 50 meters into the sea, so, you know, for, uh, you know, kind of border control, whatever, but to prevent people from crossing over easily. I love that aesthetic, um, even though it's always horrifying that the same people would do that. They used to be a friendship garden. I learned that which allowed people from both sides to meet in between and commune and have, but then it was closed off when, uh, uh, during the Donald Trump um, presidency. And uh, also the same wall was used as like a political canvas for people to, you know, do activism and actually protest. So these names that you see apparently are from uh, ex-U.S. Uh, army officials who were promised um, uh, citizenship once once they served but never got their citizenship um, so people had a list had listed these uh, names there but then there are so many activism and almost like uh, um, protests on the wall the side of the wall but I love the aesthetic I love what you know it could it had turned into and I made this installation that reflected that complexity of place the idea of uh being on the other side and even the transaction of that the place meant um but then it was these uh panels but angled at maybe a 30 degree so from one side you see you see through it and then from the other side it flattens out um and then straight on you see gaps in between so almost like it's giving you um, a hint of exposure, but it's also closed, which uh, the wall was, uh, you know, had such aesthetic. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, this is how it is. And then the same year last year, I I had a, a residency in the UAE, specifically in Dubai. But the gallery that I worked on that project with had a collaboration with the Dubai Culture. And I'm sure like 
whatever you would imagine to buy, you would imagine extreme luxury, you know, money, like those things. But the whole promise, the uh, premise of this show was to actually, I was interested in engaging and getting to understand uh, their culture, the people, their history, their heritage, like who are they before, you know, the glamorous representation of the place. Um, so we did a lot of engagements with the commun communities, with the Emiratis, getting to love, uh, understand or learn about their, you know, economic histories and what they were trading in before these oil and all of that. And I started making these works and almost like immediately the works turned into like these almost like uh, old Arabic motifs, you know, ancient motifs uh, that were specific to the land. Um, also, I was interested, uh, uh, half of the works were made in Dubai and half in New York. I wanted to understand, like use my own perspective or perception of the place to build these. So I was building almost like this uh, uh, futuristic landscapes of architectural buildings. So the work started protruding and it started becoming very complex whilst compared to like these ones, which are almost like subtle and almost represents representational of a, a place and a people um, whilst I was communing with them. And once again, uh, the color palette even changed. It became more brownie, uh, it became more earthy and all of that. Um, so um, that, was, that was for that project. And then I came to San, uh, Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, but when I came, I, I told Kilolo I came with a with a panel, um, but then because I I wanted to make as much as I can or as many as I can learn as many as much as I could, um, so I started working building off uh, the past projects that I've been making as experiments. So I made this work, which already have been some has been something that I, I've been working on. Um, but once again, going heavily on, on metal uh, because I love the fact that Pittsburgh has a very rich history of steel, the steel industry, how it changed the economy of U.S., almost built the economy of U.S. Um, I'm interested in how materials could dictate that pace in economic change and tra rapid transformation, how it could also, it could also affect uh, migration because uh, during that, you know, the early a, a days uh, that was what instigated a lot of people movements around you know America and all of that. Um, but before uh, before I went to that, I I was like I I had this work which already uh, well I, I had this I've been reading a lot of these things you know um, watching a lot of documentary and it felt as if these instances that. Uh, 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 brought up the Black Lives Matter, like protests and movement already is yes, like lingering on. Of course, it's been on, you know, for ages. But I felt like having Black Lives Matter text uh, on top of uh, the penny in gold, you know, something that perhaps like almost feel like value, uh, you know, placing this almost vandalized. And for the first time I said, um, I, this is when in perhaps like eight or nine years, this is the first time I'm actually painting on a work in my studio. But that idea of actually vandalizing the penny or putting this on top of the penny, it felt it felt right to me, and I made this. But this is in the studio. Uh, for all those who came uh, a little bit late, you can see the actual work right behind you in the room behind you. Um, so also, I've been working on. Uh, I've been taking courses or well, classes you know, at uh, Proto Haven, at the uh, Pittsburgh Media and Arts, uh, and I've been taking screen printing classes and ceramics, and at Proto Haven, I'm learning Vector um, with some friends here, uh, and also the <laughs> using their woodshop, and this is something that uh, Alma Lewis is giving me access to, to not only produce, but then actually also gain the benefits of learning uh, from these spaces. Um, but I thought of the work already, I've been experimenting with texture and color, um, I, but I thought of how I could reproduce this, you know, through things like even screen printing, uh, which is actually just using 
uh, the color and then and then the motive the film but then once i screen print i want to go back into it uh, add copper to it and then also start a whole new process so almost like so many layers of making and unmaking and remaking uh elements to it so um but before i end uh i think my time here is actually to dig deeper into the history of metals and how it shaped the economy uh my research which i'm building uh, what i'm doing now is actually revisiting these sites picking up debris and perhaps like objects and seeing what i can make out of that it could be a text uh a research proposal for future things it could be just me understanding why i'm using steel um but this opportunity is giving me all the assets and tools to explore that huge element in my practice and the end <laughs> great thank you yao uh we're gonna take uh, any questions or comments for yao i know nobody wants to be the first right um oh great joanne I, I could not believe it. I spoke to him <laughs> and asked him, how did he do this? How did he get this stuff in and out of the country with all those pennies? And he said, he gave me an excuse. I don't remember how, but your work is absolutely beautiful, especially when I saw the draped pieces that you have up on, on the screen there. It's just amazing. I don't know how you do this. Do you have assistance? <laughs> a lot of questions you know chemical processes like ad advice and all of that um but just so you know to learn the technicalities of it you know so the west could live longer um so sometimes i do have assistance yeah yeah for your um meta facebook you had yeah, yeah for the meta i have for our show i also had some help um and lately i've been i've been because i wanted to the west became bigger and bigger and i i cannot i'm too small for that all right. Any other? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my question is, it's kind of on, right? Um, now in your own life, whether you're here or back in Ghana or anywhere in the world, because you work with all this currency so much, does has the idea and the value of money you're handling every day changed to you? Absolutely. I think, uh, especially when uh, this, you know, wave of cryptocurrencies came, how digitalized all our currencies are. Like, I barely hold current, like money on me. Um, I And now, even more so, you barely, like, pick your card because you could use your phone to buy and make transactions. So I, I think the idea of currency is expanding and expanding, as you know, uh, so widely. And I'm trying to keep up, <laughs> but I, I I find I find comfort in in knowing also that you know my words become perhaps like archival objects you know to teach like people in the next century or so what money looked like because maybe definitely there there wouldn't be any, um, yeah. Thank you. Take another question or comment. Yes, Karen. I, I think I want to say just that I'm astonished at how heavy some of those must be. And my question is, do you have to um, arrange for special reinforcement in the galleries when you hang it up? Because I've done a lot of gallery installation and I know that sometimes it's a real problem. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, um, it's changed a lot of a lot of like a lot of dynamics in my work. Um, my work hasn't changed; it's only improved. But uh, the spaces that the works live 
are now requesting for i need to give them specific like things where you know for the work to hang i think it's yeah it's heavy but it's also i think it's also beautiful that the language and what art objects could be also is like now educating these uh, art institutions uh even architects uh, architects uh to design buildings as, as well yeah but all right anybody else any brave person ask a question or comment yes lizzie thank you for that wonderful presentation um i'm just curious do you have a sense yet of how your um, research here into ceramics and screen printing might impact the next phase of your work is it too early to ask that question <laughs> Um, it's not too early, uh, but also it's quite early. But I, <laughs> but then I'm I'm excited about um, you know, how vast the work could be. Um, I love that uh, because I use one object. I use penny. It could be like almost repetitive. So I'm looking for ways of presenting this that will not be that repetitive but then carry subjects or even ideas in different ways so i think uh, the ceramics would w could help uh if not now um i'm sure like in the future like screen printing and even the tools that i'm using in proto even could impact so many things in the future or perhaps even in the studio but maybe we'll see <laughs> yeah thank, thank you. you thanks lizzie oh adelaide uh, it's great to see all your work. Um, I was just going to say, I'm thinking about what you said about us using physical currency less and less, but it's still like a very real, um, really in use in Ghana, you know, people using cash. I mean, I guess also, what's it called that people do with their phone? Um, no, not, it's like cash up, but popular in Ghana. Momo. Momo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm also interested in value and currency, and it, it's interesting to think about like the history of currency in Ghana and a lot of things that we don't think of as currency used to be like the um, strips of strip cloth, you know, on a big wheel or like trade beads. So have, do you think about other things that predated, maybe predated coin? Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, I, I, uh, that's, that's in some of my works, I was using um, Kari's which the cities were even named after. Um, and also digging into the, those histories, looking at, uh, I was reading uh, the Periplus from the Eritrean Sea, which is like a fact century um, record of trade routes along like the uh, Egypt, you know, Morocco, between the a Asians, or the South Asians and even Europe, uh, and how objects, you know, butter trade, how objects became, and, and also, that's the main reason, uh, or the main tool the West got to 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 Ghana and to Africa, you know, by butter trading, you know, giving us guns or salt for for gold and all of that. So that element of commodities serving as currencies before coinage or like notes, you know, sparked my interest and how even humans, like I said, became commodities of trade, sparked my interest in coming here. Um, so I've explored a few, not so many, because I, I think I've found uh, the coins who embody a lot of it because of its material content. And, and uh, yeah, I've, uh, but I've used the calories that I, uh, for sure, yeah. And it could also be interesting because you're from Kumasi and it's um, like a city known for brass casting and for making the gold weights to weigh gold dust. Have you, have you worked with any brass casters in Kumasi or thought about it? Oh, now I am like I, <laughs> I, 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 in the next uh, summer, like I, I, I was having a conversation with her earlier and I was telling her how my next project is going to be in Ghana. Uh, and, and there I'm exploring so many other, uh, you know, parts of what currency was before. Uh, the whole premise is going back before the West inter Western intervention. And you know, trying to understand how the heritage and the values uh, that we had were valid and were much valuable before, like the Western de depiction or description of what value is. Mm. Yeah. So maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, let's thank talk. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Mike's final um, rumination here. David? So uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little more about the process when you had hung the piece up and people were removing the pennies. And I, I mean, I was profoundly struck by that um, because in your mind, there is an artistic intent and a commentary about value and worth, but there was, uh, you're, you're working from a position of non-value and giving it some sort of aggregated value. And this idea, I, I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about that transition from being pissed off to, to realizing that there was something very powerful happening there. There was this interactivity that um, it, it, to me might be some kind of gateway because there's so much philosophical intent behind your work. And then if you release it into the public domain and they have this kind of interactive process, like it seems to me there's a lot of possibility there. So I, I'd love to hear about that transition. What happened when you went from being pissed to, wow, this is not what I imagined? <laughs> Well, thank, thanks for that. Um, on that, uh, it was a, a two or three day uh, festival. So the work is supposed to be up for three days. But honestly speaking, between those three days, I had wished nobody touched it. Uh, I had wished that the work, because it was the flag, it was really beautiful. Uh, but when they were taking the coins, um, I couldn't do there's so many people doing that. I couldn't do anything about it. But I realized that at least one, one thing I realized was that, oh, it's because I had changed it, you know, because they know it, it, the coin exists, but nobody actually takes it or uses it. But because now the same coin is now red and it's now gold and it's now green and black, it became a different object. So for the three days, uh, it, that was the only thing that was on my mind that, well, at least uh, I made them, they think it's, it's perhaps like valuable, but they will go home and realize, oh, it's just the one Pessoa. <laughs> yeah, but um, when I was going through the images and when we were hanging it in the new location, which is like, it's a five-star hotel uh, and it has a beautiful wall. They had like 20 people attending to this. But when I was doing it, we had like seven of my friends, yo, help me up. Uh, but that transition between being it being on the streets and it being here and how on the streets and in that place, even when it was taken off, um, it, it seemed to fit there. But, you know, when we I brought this to a five-star hotel, then it was something different. And I think that was the moment where I realized, oh, the actual work wasn't the object that had been made. Because still people were relating to it and I was trying to understand, you know, the, almost the contrast between the spaces where at my, my work had lived. Um, I think that was, the, that was the, the moment for me. And that was like over a year later. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Yao, very much. And thank you, everybody, for um, your questions and your comments. And Yao will be here through um, mid-April. Uh, and we're going to have other programming. And we'll definitely have a nice celebration send-off. But you'll still be part of our community um, in April as well. So thank you. <laughs>